Yo, 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 welcome back to 80 Vlogs. Today we're going to be talking about how I create designs for my t-shirt. If you're looking at the screen right now, uh, we are looking at some elements in which I used for my recent design. You've probably already seen the design right now uh, from the thumbnail of this video. So right here, I'm just showing you, you know, all the types of elements that I used towards creating that final image. So yeah, these are some of the elements that I used. As a matter of fact, I should probably go and look for that final vector. Where's the final vector? Uh, let's see here. All right, yeah. And this one as well. So like now we have a complete number of elements that were used in creating this design. So yeah, as you can see, all of these elements that you're looking right here on the screen, I found all these elements in publicdomainvectors.com. So if you look at my past videos where I spoke about publicdomainvectors.com, that's pretty much where you can go to go to get elements and things to inspire you to use for your designs that are 100% free. You're not going to get any copyright claims. You're not going to get any, any type of trouble for using those elements. They are completely free. So that's pretty much where I always go to get elements for me to create designs for especially if i'm not planning on using any paid platform for me to get elements because i like to sort of you know bring a sense of creativity to my designs so most of the time if you go to all these platforms you know most of the time that's where a lot of people are going to as well so you are going to end up using designs that a lot of people are using as well so with this you are you get a chance to be creative you get a chance you know to sort of have that creative freedom when it comes to creating the final design with such elements it does take a lot of effort it takes a lot of man hours for you to to, to come up with a complete design uh, most of the things that you're going to be using right here i'd say uh, it's going to be this one the first one is going to be the uh, the eraser tool we are also going to use the magic eraser a lot you're also going to use the pen tool uh, for most of the times. You're also going to be using this one, the polygon lasso tool. These are things that I use uh, most of the time when I'm creating these designs. Besides that, you know, some of these elements, you may need to color them. Elements such as the mushroom right here. Vectors such as this little frog guy here painting. With the house right here, uh, let me just show you what I'm talking about as I'm doing this. So let's see, let's see, let's see, bang. Bang. just put that right on the top put this in a group probably name it vector elements, elements. Bam. okay cool here's what i was talking about obviously this is not the complete design but you can see every element that i used right here oh man i'm actually quite missing a few elements so let me just go ahead and get those all right so right here we have the complete number of well, we have all the complete elements that I use for this design. Um, so yeah, as you can see here, what I was talking about with the house. Let me just zoom in and show you. I took a little piece of like the wood on this house right here, and I used it to create this little house right here with all those those wood elements. As you can see, it was a tedious thing. It took a lot of time. You, yeah, you kind of have to use like all those warping tools and all that stuff for you to end up with something that looks like this as you can see here i also used the door element i used the brick element as well i then also used the grass blades to sort of create a little piece of garden right here i want to uh, actually focus on is the the grass right here if you want to end up with the same type of grass texture that you can see right here it was all done using the clone tool the clone tool is this one right here so um, let me just show you an example of how you can use this clone tool if you're trying to achieve the same effect that I was able to achieve as well. And another thing, when you are using these vectors, you always have to rasterize them and convert them back to a smart object for you to be able to edit them on the other side on Photoshop. Uh, so yeah, so right here, what I would do is I would use the magic eraser tool I erase everything because I, I, you know, I, I don't want all this white uh, stuff on my on, on the grass blades. So I click everything until I get rid of all the whites. Obviously, I'm not going to do it right here because I'm just showing you uh, an example. And then I come here, the polygon lasso tool. I click on this, click, click. I go to cut. 
and then I turn this one off and then I press control plus S mm -hmm. and then it's going to save the, the effect to this side as you can see right there anyway like I was saying uh, all you have to do is come here click on alt put it on the side click again drop it come back put it on the side drop it come back put it on the side and drop it and then until you you sort of like cover a desired area you highlight the area uh, just like this Uh, right, right there and then you copy this right you keep on copying this until you get a bigger patch of grass and then you you do that as well until you end up you know with you know a lot of li little grass blades that you know and end up resembling uh, the sort of grass texture that you're looking for so that's pretty much it uh, I would say that, that that's the thing that that is time consuming followed by adding all that wood texture on the house that is you know the mostly the the only thing that is time consuming when it comes to this design so so as you can see as i was talking with the grass blade you know you can sort of see the lines right here uh, you know it's sort of almost like maybe the grass someone has mown as as you know cut, has cut the grass but then these are all just because uh, this well I did layers and layers and layers on top of each uh, t sort of grass patch until you know I ended up with, with the desired effect that you can see right here. So yeah, um, another thing that I added with these window frames right here, I also had to add uh, the the wood texture on these window frames. Uh, if you if you would like to see just how I. Uh, added the, the the wood texture on the on the on the house uh, this is how I did it first off you, you rasterize and then you click on convert to <coughs> to smart object uh, you come right here uh, still again just like I said it in, uh, in the in the video you're going to use the pol the polygon lasso tool uh, we're just going to come in right here and then we're going to select a little piece of wood uh, that we are going to use uh, when we are adding uh, texture elements. Uh, right, uh, left, left side click, and then press cut. Take that away. Control. And then now you press Control, save. You come back here and then the, the here is the the little wood piece that you're going to use uh, when you add all those textures so we are just going to make sure that we rasterize this and then let me just zoom in right here mm -hmm. <coughs> just zoom in okay cool yeah what you're gonna do is you're going to move this wood texture a little bit uh, what you what you you are you're trying to you know sort of move it in a way that it, it it aligns with where you want to put it and then you're going to come here on this little logo right here uh, which right which is, is written switch between free transform and warp click on that and then you are just going to use this little diagrams right here to maneuver and you know sort of like uh, shape this thing into into the lines right here that you're looking for so just like this you're going to do this right here uh, and you're going to do this until you reach the desired effect and outcome for for your for your design uh, so I'm just going to make an example right here for what I'm talking about Don't worry about the, uh, the little black spaces that you're leaving out because you are going to eventually get rid of the black outline of the house anyway. So don't stress about that. So, okay, cool. Now we click OK. So, yeah, as you can see, now you're just going to have to come and add layers and layers and layers of this wood texture. 
until you are completely done and end up with the result that looks like this one right here uh so yeah if when you are you, when you start with creating the roof of this little house uh it's you still you you still use the same the same technique uh only this time around okay let me just put this back image layers okay so yeah actually you can press control and and z at the same time so that we can go back to before we got rid of this uh, line right here so yeah now you're going to click on the polygon lasso tool again but this time around you're going to uh, highlight a bigger piece of this what i do is that i also click on <clears throat> i also click on the edges of the wood right here uh to sort of give me the desired effect that i'm looking for when i place it that side actually this time we'll press copy because we don't want to keep on ruining the wood and then you press ctrl s and then you're going to get the effect uh, on this side. I don't seem to see the effect that side. So you can just come here, click hold and grab it. And we can bring it this side. Because I, I don't see where it's at. So yeah, anyway. Come in right here. You zoom in. And then what you want is you want, you want to make sure that the... the, the the, the wood texture is under this uh, this outline of the little house right here for you to actually end up with the desired effect. So yeah, what you're going to do right here is press Ctrl C and Ctrl V. And then you're just going to layer this wood textures just like this until they are like three or four and until it's like three or four of them uh just like that and then highlight all of them right uh left click merge layers and then let's just look at where this little house texture is right here and we're going to make sure that this is under the the the, the house texture so you, you, as you can see right here now you can come and maneuver uh, this and pl and start placing it uh, right where you want it to create that roof effect you can uh, resize minimize wh whatever it is that you think was going to look cool and bam right there and then you're going to use things such as uh, the eraser tool you just minimize it right here and then you're going to get rid of that see just like that okay and then you're going to do that until you fill up the whole house you're going to do the exact exact same thing when it comes to on the side of the walls as well so yeah this is that that's pretty much how you do that uh with the mushrooms and everything all you have to do is you're just going to have to uh color this stuff coloring this stuff is not no, it's it's also not not that uh complicated either rasterize the layer and then convert it back to smart object double click on it and then you're going to come here and then you're going to create a new layer always make sure that the layer is uh under the layer that you want to draw that you want to color on yeah, so you're going to come here i'm just going to zoom in i'm not going to sort of you know recreate it again but then i'm just going to show you how i do this kind of uh, sort of things and then yeah you're, you're just going to start placing in the colors simply so just like that uh i am doing this sort of in a messy way but i'm just trying to show you the general way in which you can do this okay so yeah um uh, come right here color this All right, just like that. Yeah, I'm, you're just going to use the eraser tool to get rid of all the splashes and things uh, that you did right here. You can zoom in as much as what you want uh, for you to get, you know, the desired type of um, 
or type, 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 type of detail that you want to put in and then you're going to create another new layer always make sure that the new layer is under the first layer and then right here let's just double click and choose another color for this click ok go back and then color again what i like about this is as you color your your the 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 color that you place on does not spill onto the the color that you did before so this actually helps you to create uh, designs that look nice designs that don't look messy so yeah just like that and then keep on creating a, a new layer you know as you keep on coloring everything and that's pretty much how you get everything to look uh so yeah we're just going to exit this oh uh when you when you're done with everything just press control save pro uh, that, that's going to be control uh, the C C T R L on your on your keyboard plus S and it's going to save everything and everything's going to show up this size. So as you can see right there, we did that that little mushroom. Uh, so this is the same thing that I did when I was coloring this stuff as you can see right here. Nothing too big, nothing too nothing too crazy. Same thing I did with the gra with the grass blades. It's sort of the same thing I did with the cloning right there and then i place the, the 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 mushroom and everything Before you cut out the pond, uh, just make sure that if you if there's anything else you would like to get rid of, do that uh, before you, you you do anything else. So right here we're just going to get rid of the boat. And how I'd, I would like to do this is first we're going to we are going to go to the spot healing brush tool, and we're just going to click over this boat right here. All right, and then after the boat is gone, we are going to come. Uh, to the page tool uh, is it the page tool or is it the healing brush tool and then you're going to click on alt to uh, for the brush tool to sort of know where it is it should look at uh, while it you know sort of like sort of create back the content of this pond so right here as you're clicking you can see that um, it's sort of like using other parts of the pond to recreate this so this is what i use you know to get rid of the boat and stuff like that and just try and make it look as natural as possible you know you don't want it you don't want people to sort of like tell that you know something was removed right here or anything like that so just keep on fiddling with it you know until okay let's just turn back right there because i was starting to you know click on stuff that shouldn't really be clicking on okay don't worry if it looks kind of crazy you're also still going to apply some effects on this so that's not a problem so right after that you're going to use your pen tool and you're going to make an outline of the pond right here Okay, so I'm just making a rough outline guys so obviously when you're doing it please take your time oh and another another thing that I would like to just let you know right now once you want to get rid of this little line right here because you don't want anything to bend just click on alt and then uh, simultaneously click on 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 the on the on the on the line as well and to, to get rid of to get rid of um from the the line from you know bending and going in a direction that you don't want and what i mean if, if you do if you do it without clicking uh it sort of doesn't give you the a, a desire a, a desired effect so always click on it just like that and then bam okay and then now you make the selection click okay 
and then we're going to go to the polygon lasso tool and then we're going to click on cut and then we're going to get rid of that and then you're going to press control save and then just like that here is the point guys uh you can go back and use uh, the eraser tool right here to sort of shape uh this pond uh into the desired type of shape that you're looking for okay you know get you come here and like get rid of all those rough edges stuff like that okay so yeah and then you save it and then you come here and here it is guys it's roughly uh sort of like the same with the one i did right here so yeah right after that uh the next thing that you're going to do is just doing placements placements are not that difficult at all just make sure that the layers uh after you place after you place something make sure that you put it behind another layer for you to to sort of get the desired effect and stuff like that so yeah when i got rid of this door it wasn't it wasn't anything uh amazing you know i just used the pen tool uh you click on it you drive it around and then you make a selection and then you use the po poly uh the poly the polygon lasso tool and then you cut it out stuff like that and then you place it in uh the effect that i used i think i used the i think i used the the overlay effect right here when i was uh when i when i placed it on, on the on the house right there so yeah the next thing that i did guys with this design um let's just look at let's just go over this yeah the next thing that i did with the design is that i added a gradient over it because i knew that i wanted let's just go, go over here all right because i knew that i wanted um i wanted i wanted everything to sort of communicate well i wanted all the colors you know to 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 to, to sort of like complement each other and make it seem like it's all one image so what i did is i went and added a gradient overlay over this this design right here and the gradient overlay is <coughs> just uh the first color i did was the dark blue color that i found from this side and the red color that i found on this on the strip of the moon right here and then i added when you if you if you like to know how to add a gradient you just come over here and you press a uh, gradient right there and then right after that you come right here uh, let me just release this you come right here and you press on um where is it and then you press on create clip clipping mask do you see the, do you see the difference right there is the difference without the gradient here here it is with with the gradient so yeah I then place the gradient i also did some bright brightness and contrasting right here uh this is pretty much simple you just come here to image adjustments brightness and contrast and then you just you, you just do the you you just uh fit play with the settings until you you get a desired uh sort of outcome after you, you are done with everything just click on the top the on the top most layer and then click on Control shift alt e and then it's going to uh, merge everything all together into one image this is the image that you're going to use to edit uh, on camera roll filter and always make sure that the that the white background is turned off because if it's not turned off then everything uh, is not going to be transparent so make sure that when you do press that that the the background is turned off at, every time because you see now i turned off the background but then the image right here uh it's not being transparent because i didn't uh, turn it off so if i just go back right here just to show you what i'm talking about um let's see okay cool and then i turn off the background and then i delete this one the one that i created okay now everything is trans transparent so just click on control shift alt and e right there so now everything now you have just created you are, now you have just merged everything together and it's transparent as well so as you can see right here now i can add back the background and i can remove the background so yeah right after this guys what you're going to do is um 
right after that you're going to end up with the final uh, create, uh, Im image that you that you created right here so yeah with the final image uh, this is not even the one that I would like to show you guys um, let's see right so um, I'm just going to make an example with this one right here not this one so yeah with with this example right here let me just roughly do this for you guys so that I can show you just what I'm talking about Okay, now that I created this, even though it's like way too big, I'm just gonna come here, merge the layers. Uh, dang. Yeah, merge the layers together, and then we're going to come filter, camera raw filter. This is where I sort of like play around with the with the with the effects for me to sort of end up with the desired sort of type of you know uh, type of look and feel. So right here, as you can see, the first thing that I like to do is I'm going to push this tint to a little bit more, to, to, to look a little bit more purple. Um, and then I'm going to uh, push this one uh, to, to sort of like bring a, sort of like a cold feel to it. And then I'm going to increase the saturation. So as you can see already, it's sort of like starting to look good right here. And then I'm going to increase the blacks. Increase the shadows. Okay, yeah. And then contrast. Just look at the. And then just like fiddle around with the contrast and see what's working well and what's not. So, yeah, guys, this is what I do until I sort of like get the desired effect of what I'm looking for. Okay. And then, yeah, right there, I'm gonna go out. I fiddle with the sharpness. See, get it to look a little bit sharper and everything so yeah man you, you just come here and fill it with and just play with all these things until your you know your image is looking uh the way that you want okay and then yeah everything and then after, after that i click okay as, as you can see you know there's a big change from that one to this one this one looks a little bit more you know sort of like uh it looks everything all the colors sort of like uh, uh, communicating well with each other and stuff like that so yeah i mean and then right there you get your complete design 